What's a Fakemon region without its starters? Well, I don't know what it would be, but I do know it would feel pretty incomplete. Ah, starters, the little buddies that stand by your side, from your start as a Pokey Trainer novice to when you reach the Elite Four towards the end of your game. The design of a starter is incredibly important. Other than Pikachu, it's likely to be your first introduction into Pokemon, and they need to catch your eye. I think there's a few things that a starter should be. Cute, childlike, it should look young. It doesn't have to be a baby, but it does need to look young. Chicks, little mice, little, little tiny guys. After all, it'll be growing with you. It should be the embodiment of an element, but not the master of it. It's symbiotic with its element, but it's not necessarily a skilled user of it. For example, none of the fire types are just covered in flames or holding fire in its hands. They don't really seem all that physically powerful. They should be instantly iconic. Look at these designs. They're simple and readable at an instant and at a distance. They're fairly unique among other Pokemon in spite of its simplicity. You're not gonna look at a starter and think, wait, don't we already have X, Y, or Z Pokemon? No, they're, they're, they're pretty special. They need to be an instant friend, a friendly smile, a mischievous vibe, maybe a nervous Pokemon that might even look to you to protect it. You know once you've made it, you'll be side by side with a buddy that's ready to defend you as you protect each other. At the end of the day, They've got protagonist vibes. You need to be able to imagine living, laughing, and loving with this Pokemon. Now, as I've been mentioning, I'm currently working on a Fakemon region based on the south of the US, and I'm finally ready to start discussing the themes, the vague details of my re region, and maybe even some of the specifics. Now, the themes of the region actually influence the abilities and, uh, and influences <laughs> in these starters. And I don't want to get to that just yet. I'd like to make a video in and of itself about the region. So I'm going to hold off on some of those details, at least until I get to the middle stage evolutions. For now, I'm going to lean more into talking about the animals and personalities of these Pokemon. Let's start with our grass type. I always knew I wanted to make one of my starters either a sea mink or a wolverine. One is an extinct mustelid from North America that was hunted for its waterproof coat, and due to its large size and therefore a large, useful coat, it was hunted to extinction. And the other is the wolverine. It's one of the coolest, toughest animals out there. It's a weasel that's like a bear and a wolf. Does it get cooler than that? And I think starters with cool factor are incredibly important. You want to have the dragon that you want to share at, uh, on the playground. So I've drew, drawn the fur drooping. It's sort of a reference to hanging moss. Its fur also hangs a bit like a ghillie suit, which is used to camouflage in the woods. I then gave it sort of like a Boy Scout garrison hat made from a leaf. It's a little Pokemon that cares about nature, protecting it. It lives amongst it. It's the embodiment of the forest. Meet Woodvary from Wood and Wolverine. This Pokemon loves nature and dislikes those who don't respect it. The few times this Pokemon has been spotted in the wild, it's often caught cleaning litter or helping Pokemon smaller and weaker than itself. It isn't very strong and isn't naturally brave, but it has a strong sense of justice. I want it to be a tough little guy that cares about the world around it and others. Next up, water. Along with a wolverine, I knew the entire time I wanted to make a dog starter, and more specifically a basset hound. When I get into my inspirations, it'll become a lot more apparent why my choice in dog species was as easy as it was, but I think it just naturally fits into the south. It's a hound dog. I want to make it droopy, bottom heavy, made of a near liquid solid, grabbable, but not exactly hard, kind of maybe like a slime. And I give it big paws, like the fluid is pooling downward into its feet. It's being drawn down by gravity. Introducing Dalmisty from Dalmatian and Mist. This Pokemon can feel emotions and the aura of those around them through the sounds that vibrate through its liquid-like body. And because of how well it reads people, it's nearly impossible to trick or lie to this Pokemon. After feeling these sounds vibrate through its body, it can replicate the pitch with howls and yips. It's maybe a little bit more on the nervous side, but because it can read people's intentions, it's likely to become your friend if you're a friendly person. Last but not least, let's get to fire. Now this one, the animal, I debated it in my head for the longest time. Well, not necessarily. The whole time I wanted to make a pig, but we've already got a fire pig, so I just couldn't do that so easily. And for a time I went back and forth between goats, cows, and sheep. 
and a few other farm animals, and eventually I just went back to the pig. I had a good idea in my head, and I mean, these aren't real Pokemon. I don't have to worry about their competitive viability. I don't have to worry if it's been done before. I, I don't gotta worry about all that. I, I can do whatever I want. And what I want is to make a pig. Now what I can do is keep it away from that stereotypical farm pig look, so I decided to base it off the peccary, which is a pig that's native to the Americas. So it actually has these tusks that are interlocked, so I'm actually leaning into that and making those pieces of flint that when rubbed together create sparks. And the animal in the wild actually clicks its teeth together to ward off predators. Making sparks, clicking its teeth, it works. Here we have Piquette. From pig and briquette, like charcoal briquette. I also looked up the word piquette, and it's apparently a type of French wine named after the prickly feeling it causes in your mouth when you drink it, which is beautifully in line with this Pokemon. I couldn't have planned it any better. I mean, I did kind of plan it. I worked forever on these names. <laughs> but it's also a simple wine and considered low quality, which leans into the fact that it's a pre-evolution. It's untrained. This Pokemon has two sets of tusks that it quickly rubs together to create sparks. In its incredibly hot mouth, it cooks its food as it eats it. It can usually be found rooting around for food at every opportunity. It's a carefree, greedy little guy. He just likes to eat and have a good time. And of course, the all important question, which would you choose? Now, I know that can be hard to do without knowing the evolutions, but be bold, be brave. This isn't an exam. And I mean, I won't snitch if you change up <laughs> what you want when you see the evolutions. And if you like the video and you want to catch more, subscribe. Next up, I'll be making my mascot, my Pikachu. Uh, that or a video detailing out my region and its themes. And of course, we'll get to the evolution of these in between all of those. Either way, I think they'll be fun videos to catch, so don't miss them.